What's up, dudes? Alex here with Gigabit X. Uh, today's video, we'll be going over Ubiquiti's network management system, also known as uh, UNMS. Uh, we recently got this deployed uh, in our network or to monitor a part of our network. And uh, so far, we're liking it. Features are pretty nice. Uh, it's giving you a little bit more information than the legacy air control does. Uh, so we like that as well. Um, but overall, it's been a pretty good tool. It's got a few caveats, which we'll be going over here in a little bit. But um, overall, you know, good system. I uh, really, really enjoy it. We really like it. Um, but uh, kind of the purpose of today's video is go over those features, compare it to legacy air control, and see what fits best uh, for your network needs. So let's go ahead and get logged into um, our UNMS system here. So this is the main dashboard of UNMS. Uh, we have less than 20 devices in this so, uh, so far, uh, so 18 to be exact. So um, it is nice. Um, you can group together radios um, in, what's, in what's known as sites here. So think of sites as just like you know, your tower locations per se. So uh, if you go to, a, so like all these are here, these are all some of our towers here. So if you click on one of our towers, you can drill down and it will show you each individual radio that you've added to it. All right, so not, you know, now you know that all these radios are from this particular tower. Um, to give you a little bit of basic info, just uptime and CPU. Um, if you drill down a little bit more into a specific AP, it will show you a lot of the good information, CCQ of the, uh, the links, the kind of radio you have, kind of DB you have on here. Um, shows you the real-time um, data throughput going through that radio. Um, another great feature of UNMS that I do like is you can actually click on stations here to the left, and uh, it will show you all the stations connected, receive levels um, for all of them, um, as well as the uh, capacities for each. So, you know, it gives you a real good bird's eye view, right? If you want to just, you know, take a quick glance to make sure that none of your um, customers' radios have moved or, you know, gone out of whack, right? You can just look at this real quick and be like, oh, yeah, look, check it out, 58, 54. That's within range. If you come in here and obviously see a you know, NIG 80 or something, you know, obviously there's going to be a problem. So uh, that's, that is one great feature that I do like uh, about UNMS. Um, you also get some um, other detailed specs as far as latency and outage. It will kind of show you what the latency is between the uh, network management server and the CPE, or the radio, I should say. Um, CPU and RAM, um, again, data throughput um, through that. Um, you know, it shows you all that here. So um, overall, um, pretty good system. If you just if you don't want to drill down in between sites and you just want to look at all the devices, you can click on devices, click on all the active here, and it will show you all the devices which you can sort through IP address or host name or however you want to look at it. Um, you know, good info here. Definitely uptime. Definitely signal levels. Um, you can do some basic functionality on each one of these. Um, as far as um, go back here. As far as uh, restarting them, you know, firmware upgrades. Um, you know, I've, we've done a handful of uh, um, Arrow OS upgrades straight from this um, interface, and it's worked good. It's worked good. So, um, no complaints there. Definitely no complaints there. Um, so, you know, in a nutshell, you know, this is um, UNMS. And this is how it looks, and this is what you can this is what you you can expect from a typical deployment of UNMS. Uh, this is not cloud hosted. This is um, uh, we have an Ubuntu server that hosts us here locally in our data center. So it's a device uh, in one of our pots, which is great for us because that's it really gives us a good um, good stats right as to the latency between radios. And, uh, there's any outages, it's essentially located within the network, so that's the best part of it. Um, so, um, pretty easy to also add devices um, to UNMS. Um, let's take this one device over here. Um, let's say we want to add this to UNMS. This is a recent customer radio here that uh, we just deployed. <clears throat> so, uh, you notice here, um, is it here? So, um, in order to get a radio onto UNMS, you gotta go to settings here, gotta go to services, 
kind of tick mark the uh, UNMS button here. And what happens is um, once you do that, you have to put in the URL that the UNMS server gives you to connect. If you don't know that, you have to go to settings over here, put a connection, and the key is right here. So you can do copy clipboard. You can go ahead and paste that over here. And once you put that into the client radio, save changes. I have noticed that it does bounce the link. Um, here. I think we're moving the bounce it. I mean, I bounce it on um, adding it, but let's see. The connection time is 14 minutes. Okay. Yeah, so notice here, uh, now we've added it. So if you go back to services, now it's checkmarked. Once you do this step here, go back into UNMS, and you'll notice here that there's a orange one button. So that means that there's a device here that you've added to UNMS, but the UNMS system has not authorized it. So, um, definitely won't authorize it. And you know it's the same one because it ends in one, dot one thirty seven. This is dot one thirty seven. So let's go ahead and authorize it. And let's go ahead and say, let's put it just in this tower here. You have to tell it kind of what site you want to put it in. So we'll authorize it. Once you authorize it, now you notice it's right here. Now you can click on it, and now you get active stats on that one particular CPU video. Notice the one here on the device we now got. And we went, I don't know if you noticed, but we had 18 devices originally, and now we have 19. So essentially, you just go through that same process, and uh, you add devices you know, until your whole network is, is completely in there. Now, one thing to note is, though, um, if you're running old M5 gear and they're pretty old in firmware, it will not let you add this or add the, the radio to this until you upgrade the firmware. And that could be a problem because obviously, you know, any kind of firmware upgrade has potential risk, right? So you want to make sure that um, if you do need to do updates that you do it in a maintenance window and in a controlled environment that, you know, to mitigate risk as much as possible. Um, but I have um, upgraded various M5 rockets through UNMS here, and uh, and there's no problems here. I believe you go to sites here, and I'm going to look here. Um, I believe this one here I upgraded. So you're looking at 6.1.7 is where they upgrades um, the M5s to, or before it was like a, I think I was an old 5. code. So that's what it updates it to. So if you want, you can also update the firmware to this version manually and then add it to UNMS if you want to, you know, do, be in control of the upgrade. So, but yeah, that's UNMS. Um, does give you uh, notifications as well. If something happens. Uh, if you look here, this was, this is the CPE that we just added. Um, if there's an outage over here, you'll notice here. It's been disconnected, disconnected. You, you know, it gives you a good view here. So if something crazy is happening in your network, and you don't have real time alerts or you don't, you know, you're not getting notified for whatever reason, you can look at it and notice, like, okay, why did this go offline? Why did this one go offline? What's 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 happening here? Is it power? Is it network? Is it you know what what's going on? So, you know, you definitely want all this as clear as possible. So and that's you in the mess here. Um we also have air control. So with air control we recently deployed that one as well. We have the um, okay part of our network on it. Show you guys here. And this is kind of the dashboard for air control. So as you can tell, one of the big differences is that this is not web-based. This is a an actual app that you install, uh, whether PC-based or Mac-based. I'm using the Mac version here because use, you know, we'll leave another video for that one. But um, Air Control um, here on the Mac, um, kind of the same concept. It gives you device groups. So essentially, you create device groups. Um, that's how you group radios. So like these are like different towers here. And within those towers, all the radios you know, from that tower, right? So for instance, if we take one of our um, towers here, same info you were getting. Um, on UNMS or you know signal wise, um, so for instance, if we look at one of the one of the uh, sectors here, it will show you connected clients, it'll show you the uptime, you know, it'll show you all the all the stats on it. You can't drill down 
um, into each CPE. That's one of the downsides of air control or one of the, you know, uh, lacking features of air control is while it does give you the connected clients, it doesn't tell you the signal of each client, which I like on the UNMS, right? Because on UNMS, you go back here and you click on a sector here, right? It gives you the levels of each individual client where air control just tells you how many clients are connected. So that's a big one for us. All right, so that's, a, that's a, a, one big difference. Um, but what we do like about it is, right, like for instance, we have some clients in a uh, client group, and I can look at all my clients at once and look at all the levels and make sure that every single day they're within range. So it's just a little bit easier to kind of view. It's a little bit different than UNMS, but also very good information. So. And one one more thing I like about the um, UNMS, I'm sorry, about air control, is that when you drill down into a CPE radio, if you need to make some simple changes, right, you can actually do that. You can do that here if you look here. If you go to system and let's say you want to change the hosting, you want to change, uh, you know, some settings, even the wireless settings, SSIDs, if you want to, you know, you can do it straight from the system. Now, Obviously, you want to be careful with that. You want to, you don't want to change the SSID and then you know, you lose connection. And now you, you know you have to go do a truck roll. But I mean, if you need to make small changes, you know we use it for like host name changes, for instance. If you notice here, there's some host names that we haven't updated. We'll go to configurations. We'll go ahead and uh, go here and then go to system, and then boom, we'll be able to change the device name on there. All right, which also bounces it. So you got to be careful with that. Um, yeah, and this is air control. So, um, and this is a little different when you add a device. When you add a device, um, essentially, it, it, it uses SSH um, for its uh, mechanism to add devices, where in the UNMS you put in that key, right? So, um, for instance, here, if you wanted to, uh, let's see, like, let's, let's add a device here, see if we can uh, do that. Number thirty. So let's go click on. Offline. Let's go to discovery. Uh, I believe that's what we did last time. So you want to go ahead and run discovery. And when you run discovery here, it'll show you all the new devices that it finds. Um, and it will tell you it'll want credentials free. So if you notice here, there's four here that have not been added. But the one that we were dealing with earlier was dot 137. Oops. Now, um, now that we've imported those through Discovery, you'll notice that on the Not Monitor tab, you now have those four here. The 137 is the one that we were um, trying to get, right? So now you right-click on it, start monitoring, start monitoring on it. It's trying to establish SSH connection on there. It's applying the, mon the uh, monitoring parameters. Once it gets that, it'll receive all the uh, all the mounting levels. Um, let's see here. Let's go to set here. We have multiple IPs on our air control box, so sometimes we have to manually specify the uh, IP on it, but uh, okay, so let's 
share this one more time and see if it gets it. Looks like it's trying to establish an SFH connection. Okay, applying monitoring parameters again. There you go. Monitoring started successfully. Perfect. And now when you go over here, you will see the 137 that we just added. And you get all the info on it. You get levels, you get what the noise floor is, which is important. You get the full uh, capacity of the link, right, which is in half duplex, right? So you cut this in half. So 400 is 200 uh, real world usage of time, um, what frequency you're using, all that, all that good stuff. So yeah, that's air control. Um, so uh, the question is, uh, which one is better? Which one do you use? Do you use air control or do you use UNMS? Right? Um, my opinion, it's neither nor. It's both. You have to use both. There's things that UNMS gives you that air control doesn't and vice versa, right? You want to be able to see real-time alerts. You want to have multiple systems monitoring your entire network. You know, your, your WISP network eventually can get so big where you need these systems put in place. So it's not a matter of which one should I use. It's a matter of, hey, I need both. I need to set up two TVs in the knock. I need to have this uh, projected on the screens 24-7 so that when my guys come in every morning, guess what? They're looking at the network. They're monitoring it. If anything happens whatsoever, right, boom, things are red. Boom, we got calls coming in. We got phone calls. We're proactive. We know about the outage before the customer even knows about the outage. That's the mentality you need to have when, when you're deploying and when you're running an enterprise network, uh, carrier class network uh, for your customers. So um, that's it, guys. So um, in closing, definitely want to use both. Um, if you don't have either one of these, I completely suggest, I highly, highly recommend that you run both of these in your network. You've got to be able to monitor your network. If you're not monitoring your network, then you don't know the performance of it. Okay, you can't just set up the network and not monitor it on a daily basis. You have to be monitoring your network every single second. It's that important. If not, you're going to have shitty service. You're going to have crappy service. You're going to lose customers, and eventually, the worst part, you're going to go out of business. Okay, so um, take your lessons, take these hints, set up monitoring for your network. Make sure that your network is set up to the best of its ability for your customers, and more importantly, make some money. All right, Alex here. Big Red X, we out.